To go deeper into those results, let's bring in the CEO of the CME Group, Craig Donahue. He joins us live from Chicago, from the CME. Craig, welcome to uh, In Business. You know, it was an unusually big, big beat for you. What do you attribute that to? Well, we had a very strong quarter. You know, obviously, we've had a very active, um, you know, market in interest rates in Treasury uh, note and bond futures in particular. But um, as your colleague mentioned, you know, it's also been a very active environment in agricultural commodities where we're the leading provider of hedging and risk management solutions, mm -hmm. um, and then in metals as well. So, um, you know, we had very good overall activity and of course we also were very um, disciplined about our expenses this quarter also. Um, when we look and next week you get that key vote in Europe about uh, regulators approving or not the merger of Deutsche Borsa and New York Stock Exchange to establish an even bigger presence in a market that you uh, really have a uh, dominance in uh, particularly in derivatives. S&P saying that there is somewhat of a credible threat to your dominance particularly in, in the interest rate business. What do you make of that? How, how much of a credible threat is it? Well, I think um, not likely a uh, serious threat. Um, as you know, we're a very competitive organization, and um, you know we've been very successful in competing with um, Euronext and Life and Eurex before. Um, so this is effectively not new. Um, it's a renewed effort to try to compete with our core franchise in Treasury and Eurodollar markets. But the reality is, is that we have the lion's share of market share in average daily volume and open interest. Um, we have much lower um, transaction costs and better mm -hmm. liquidity, um, much more depth of book. Um, we have a much broader customer base. We have better technology and we have superior capital and margin efficiencies. So, um, you know, we respect the competition always, but we're a vigorous competitor and we pride ourselves on innovation and you know focusing on our customers needs and you expect that approval to happen um, well I don't want to uh, speculate on whether that will happen or not but um, you know what I've said before is that um, you know we believe in consolidation we were the leading consolidator right. in our industry and we assembled we think the preeminent uh, global franchise in exchange traded derivative markets and to the extent that yeah. they will create more efficiency for shareholders and customers uh, you know we wish them all the best we're, we're looking more and more towards uh, Chicago these days for direction on uh, what's next for the markets um, and we hear from traders that, that the CMA told them this week that they're going to need to post more treasuries when using them as collateral for futures trading that you're preparing for more volatility in that market. How else are you preparing? Well, you know, we have a very real time approach to risk management and protecting the clearinghouse and market participants. Um, we very regularly make margin changes. Uh, we've done that nearly 70 times uh, across our different markets uh, since the beginning of this year. Um, and as you correctly noted, uh, we've raised margin requirements as well as increase the haircuts that we apply to Treasury collateral that we accept um, for performance bond here at so, CME Clearing. But isn't that in response to what's happening in Washington or is that the, the wrong way to read that change in policy? Well, I think you can't look at it as simply a response to that one issue. Um, okay. Our margin and haircut policies are really determined on the basis of historical and implied volatilities. Um, those flow from many things, including the debt ceiling issue. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be watching. Thank you very much, Craig, for explaining uh, your earnings beat.